So as I said, we're going to start today's yoga flow, just resting on our backs. Your legs can be long, maybe pointing through the toes or flexing the feet. Your knees can also be bent if your low back doesn't especially love those long legs. Today's opening intention is about listening. Listening, not imitation, may be the sincerest form of flattery. Today's listening is not only going to be about listening to me and being perfect little yogis following along with the teacher, but I want you to really listen to your own body. When it says more, give it a little more. When it says less, listen, cut back. If you feel the need to drop a knee or move your arm a different direction, sway the hips. Listen to those subtle cues that the body is giving you. Be in control of your own space. As you feel ready, let the breath begin to deepen. Imagine the lungs growing within the rib cage becoming larger and then smaller. Maybe even seeing them as balloons and as you inhale, you feel that balloon expand within the rib cage. As you exhale, you feel the belly button draw towards the spine, that balloon start to lose some air. Listen to your body and feed it this breath all throughout today's practice. Something that makes yoga flow a little bit different than other forms of exercise is how intentional we are with that breath. Allow it to work with us, not against us. Harness that breath and give you the strength you need or the quiet you seek. As you feel ready, we're gonna to start to add just some gentle movement to the body. If the knees have been bent, let's try to experiment how it feels to lengthen and straighten those legs. I want you to point and flex your toes a little bit, roll around your ankles. If your arms have been on the belly or on the heart, let them reach out to the sides and then inhale breath, reach arms up towards the ceiling and then long above your head. Let your body become its longest version Relax the feet and ankles, gentle bends in the elbows, and then start to walk your feet towards the right edge of your mat. Lift your head, neck, and shoulders up off the earth and let it begin to reach towards the right edge of your mat. So you're in a banana shape. Side, body's opening here, and you're just breathing. Taking your time, gently walk your heels back to the center of the mat. Head, neck, and shoulders follow. And then we go to the other side, over towards the left. This is a lot about side body. Today's class, we are going to listen to all muscle groups. Move, bend, breathe, how the body sees fit. Be a little special attention on the side wall. 
the strength in your legs. Take your time to walk feet back towards center, head, neck, and shoulders, lift up off the ground, and then we'll just soften those knees, start walking them back. Head is settled back to the earth. Bend the elbows and slide them down along the sides of your body so that your hands are now pointed towards the ceiling. So it just looks kind of like you have two 90 degree angles on the sides of your body. Your elbows are pressing down into earth. Heels walk as close as they can get to the glutes with the knees bent towards the sky. When you feel ready, an inhale breath lifts your hips up off the ground, push those elbows into the earth and you're in a bridge. So when we bend our elbows like this, this forces us to use a little bit higher angles of the spine. So your cervical spine gets a chance to open here, thoracic spine nice and open, elbows pressing into the earth as the hips lift just a smidge higher. Let those feet feel planted and continue to breathe. Relax the hands down towards the ground, lift your heels up off the earth. And then start to lower down, starting up near your shoulder blades, ease that spine all the way back down to the ground, one vertebra at a time. The last thing to hit the mat is gonna be your heels. So let your low back kiss first, and then drop those heels. Hands staying comfortably on either sides of the hips, just an easy bridge lift again. Keep those hands on the ground this time, hips lift off the earth. I want you to imagine you have a block between your thighs and you're just giving some gentle pressure to that block, but your glutes are somewhat relaxed. We don't want any pinching in your low back. So if you got it, lower down just a little bit. Beautiful heels lift up off the ground and then lower again, slowly toward the earth. Once your low back kisses, then those heels drop, and then the right knee just comes into your chest. You can kind of rock a little bit side to side here. It might feel good to even extend your left leg long down the mat. Point flex the toes, roll around the ankle. And then depending on your flexibility, you can choose to keep that left leg long, or you might put a bend in it and put the foot flat on the earth as you extend your right foot up towards the ceiling, just a hamstring stretch here. Hands switch to the back of the thigh. Now you can stay right here, or if you're looking for something a little more, your hands will slide up the back of this leg towards the calf or the ankle. Your head will come up off earth. Maybe you even extend out with that left leg pushing through the heel. This is called spider pose. Hold and breathe. Softening all of that knee bends, take it back down towards chest. And then lay that foot back on the earth, switch sides. Opposite knee comes into belly, just a single leg to belly or leg to chest. Let your ankles move. You might extend that right leg along down the mat if you haven't already. And then you're gonna start thinking about that same hamstring stretch. So if it felt good to slide that other foot up the mat, give yourself kind of a kickstand, feel free to do so. Hand switch to the back of the hamstring. And then maybe hands slide up a little higher towards the ankle, head might come up on earth. You can extend that other foot out. Yep, those look fantastic. Soften the neck, soften the shoulders. Don't fight the pose. You should never feel like you're trying to win a battle. <laughs> Ease your way. Slowly, friends, back down towards earth. Hands reach up and overhead. Just give yourself some space. Beautiful. And the knees come towards chest. Rock it easy side to side. All right, we're going to move up towards our seat. Just take your time. Maybe rock and roll on the spine. Find a nice tall seated spine, hands reaching out toward the edges. And not to pick on you, Lita, but if anybody ever gets a tickle and forgets a water, there is a refrigerator right outside the door here. Just grab it. You guys can always, I know, nothing's worse than mid-corona getting like a little tickle in your throat and you just can't. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. 
Oh, we're just gonna move a little bit side to side. Like I said, that side body is talking to you. Listen to it just for a moment. Give yourself that space. Maybe close the eyes if you feel comfortable doing that, or at least soften the gaze so it goes two or three feet out in front of your nose. All right, come back to center. And then I just want you to collapse right down over your lap. Reach those hands out in front. Think about hinging right at the hip creases. So this is an outer edges of the hip stretch. You might feel a little bit in your inner thighs or your knees, but nothing should feel like it hurts. If it hurts, you need to adjust. Take your time, slowly walk those hands back towards you, and then let's find some tabletop shapes. So moving yourself to hands and knees, wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And we'll just take our time rocking those hips side to side if you need to. And then let's go forward and back. We are gonna use a little bit of wrist strength today. So we're just gonna take an extra moment to kind of warm up those wrists. So just shift yourself forward and back tabletop and then maybe child's pose. The next time you sit back into your child's pose, hold there. Surrender those hips down towards your heels. Let your hands stretch a little further out in front than in a restful child's. Maybe even tent the fingers. So that means you come up onto your fingertips and you reach, letting that forehead drop towards the ground. Beautiful work. Drop those palms back to earth. Come back to your table. But I want you to slightly shift your hips a little more for, further forward. So now we're in an up dog. So my hips gently start to drop towards the earth. My wrists are right underneath my shoulders. If you're feeling comfortable, tops of the feet might be rested on the earth. Maybe your chin even lifts just slightly. Pull through your heart like you're trying to lift it towards the ceiling. Beautiful. Go ahead, curl the toes under one foot at a time. Pull your belly button in towards your spine and begin to lift your hips into a downward facing dog. Remember downward facing dog, the goal here is to try to put yourself in an upside down V. Your hips are lifted towards the sky, maybe a gentle bend in your knees as you push those sits bones back towards the wall behind. Beautiful. Drop the knees to the ground. Inhale, breath. Exhale, sit your hips on your heels. Inhale, shift forward to an up dog. Exhale, toes curl under, belly button to spine, downward facing dog. Inhale, knees to ground. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, shift forward, upward facing dog, wrists under shoulders. Exhale, curl toes. Lift the hips. All right, good work. Small steps with your feet. Take your time to walk forward to your first forward fold. We're gonna hang here for just a moment. Head is dropping down towards the earth. Maybe you reach for a block or two blocks to put on either sides of your feet. And just shake the head yes. And no. Inhale, breath brings us up halfway. Hands go to shins or maybe on a block. Spine is long, exhale, fold. Plant those feet in the earth. Here we go, reach the hands up, inhale, breath. Exhale, take a cactus shape. All right, half sun salutation. So the inhale will take you to the sky. Your exhale will hinge and fold you down towards the earth. Inhale, breath brings you halfway, long spines like a crown pointed straight forward. Beautiful, exhale, fold. Back up, friends, plant those feet. Big inhale, reach. Cactus. Let's go again, inhale it up. Exhale, fold. Watch that low back when you fold to the earth. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Plant the feet. Inhale, reach the hands up. Hang in your cactus. Stay there. Take your cactus shape just a little bit further back. Open up that chest. 
Think about your pelvis. Try your best not to push it forward or push it back. See if we can keep it nice and grounded right underneath. Beautiful. Elbows come forward in front of the face. And then we're just going to sweep them back by your hips, bend the knees, sit in an invisible chair. So let these hands go past the knees, past the hips, point back behind, and you got a nice long full spine. Inhale, breath, reach these hands back up to the sky. Exhale, fold to your toes. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back to the back of the mat. Drop the right knee down to the ground just for a breath. So the hands are gonna come up on your inhale and then back down on the exhale. Front foot steps to the back of the mat. Put yourself in a full plank if you feel the strength available in your arms. Otherwise, knees can drop to the ground. Wrists are under shoulders, heels pointing back. Lift just slightly between those shoulder blades. Let your hips drop just a smidge there. That looks really good. All right, knees kiss the ground. Lower down with triceps right next to the side of the body. One cobra this time. So this is smaller than up dog. The pelvis is on the earth. The elbows are bent. Yes, back down. Walk those hands back even with the breastbone. Curl toes under, push to knees or full plank, your choice. And then downward facing dog. Hips are out. So remember down dog, it's always that upside down B. Your hands are shoulder distance, but your fingers, fingers themselves are really spread out. Think about trying to make your puppy paws, your dog paws as wide, spread fingers as possible. Small steps with the feet, let them walk forward. Find that half lift when your breath is ready. Drop it down. Plant the feet, take your time. You can meet me at standing whenever you're ready, all the way up to that cactus again, and then just hold it. See if you can close the eyes. Stay strong in those arms. Legs are active, elbows come forward in front of the face. As you exhale, sit back into that chair, sweep the hands back, hold. Inhale, sweep the biceps by your ears. Stay in that seat, it's invisible. Big exhale, hold, halfway lift. Left foot's going to step back this time, plant the hands, step that left foot back, left knee drops, one breath to bring hands up. We get back to earth. Curl the toes under, step front foot to the back of the mat, back to your plank, full vinyasa this time if you're up for it, chaturanga dandasana to upward facing dog, or you can have that little baby cobra we just played with. Either one. But just take your time to move through either plank on your knees to your belly to even a child's pose or you can be a down dog and just like i said listen to your own body sometimes it's going to say you know what i'm going to skip all those i do not like that it does not feel good in my shoulder my hips my back whatever it is you need to listen all right, small steps with your feet. Take your time to come back up towards your hands. Hang in that forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up, look up. And then you're back to that same cactus shape. Elbows come in front of face. Exhale, this is gonna be quicker this time. Sit in the chair. Sweep the hands up. Fold them down. Right foot steps back, but I want you in a runner's lunge. So your hands are on the ground, or maybe a set of blocks. Front knee is bent. Back foot looks like crescent. Yep, you got it. Hold for another breath. All right, hands are gonna plant on the earth. Now this foot that's at the front of your mat is gonna turn into three-legged dog. So this is your left foot. You're gonna step your left foot all the way back, but lift it to the sky. So your right foot is on the earth, your left foot is lifted, and 
and you're a dog with three legs. You can bend that lifted knee. Sometimes that's called the fire hydrant. Let you guess why. <laughs> All right, my friends, the lifted leg is going to step all the way back up to that thumb. It's a big step. So exhale when it comes through. You can move it. You can yank on it. You can laugh at yourself in the process. It's okay. Back toes are on the ground. Let's come up for a full crescent. So this is going to take some balance. Heel is lifted. Yep, you got it. Drop those shoulders. All right, hands are tall. You're going to take your time and let your chest fall forward towards this knee and you're gonna sweep your hands back by your hips. It's a big test of balance. Inhale, bring it up. If it becomes too much, just drop this back knee on the ground and you can do the same motion. Give me one more. All right, next time everybody's arms are back up, we're gonna drop this knee down, like I just showed you as a modified version. And your hands are gonna go to the outside edge of that front knee, so it feels like a nice good twist. You can stay right here. You can open a little wider. The hand that's open in the air, that one might even come around your back. Turn your palm so that the palm of your hand faces the side of your mat. So the back side of your hand is on your back. All right, unwind from that twist. Take your hands back to the mat. Two options. You can step this front foot all the way back and just go hang out and down dog or child's pose. Or you can step it to a plank. And you can have a vinyasa if you'd like. Exhale down. Inhale, up dog or cobra and then move to that downward facing dog. Like I said, those vinyasas can always be skipped. Or you can just do like a couple cat cows while they're doing a vinyasa. There's always different ways to still move the body, but maybe do it in a kinder way or a slower way or a more personal way. All right, friends, small steps or large leap feet move back to your hands. Half lift when you feel ready. Exhale, fold. Hands reach up over the head. We'll find the cactus on the exhale. Elbows kind of in front of your face and adjust as we did before. This is a little faster. Exhale, sit. Inhale, biceps by ears. Exhale, fold. Step back with your left foot this time. It's a runner's lunge. Blocks are always helpful here. Obviously, you can get a little deeper when you think about pulling your heart slightly forward. Maybe your gaze goes out a couple of inches. Shoulders are relaxed. So this is kind of that mind game I talk about when you're like, okay, Carrie, that's enough. We know what you wanted, now let's move on. Okay, front foot up here at the front of the mat. This one's going to three-legged dog. So you're gonna step that foot back, but it's gonna immediately go to the air. This is where your foundational down dog is really important. It's important that you have those hands shoulder distance apart. It's important that you're using the finger pads just as much as the heel of your hand. You almost feel as if finger pads, the heel of your hand are what's holding the pose and then like the bulk of the middle of your hand is lifted up off the earth. That's gonna protect your wrists. Push that weight back towards the wall behind you. Step that foot all the way back up there to the front of the mat. So it gets like right here, <laughs> like stuck. You can always kinda <laughs> do what you have to do. You get it there. I promise that does get easier though. All right, crescent lunge. Toes are on the ground, chest starts to lift. That's your balance. Whew. Felt a little internal heat today. Yes. All right, 
sweeping just as you did before. This is really that test of balance because you got to find a focal point with your eyes. You got to feel strong in your legs and not get too cocky and let your ego take over because that's where we start to look like a wobbly mess. As soon as we're like, yeah, I got this. That's when you don't got this. Just stay in your space and breathe. All right, hands back up by your ears. Let's start to send that knee down. Take the hands to the outer edge of that front knee. You start inviting in a twist. If your back toes feel okay, coming flat, toenails on the ground, you can do that. Hands can go wide. You might take that top hand around so that the palm faces outward. You twist into that knee. So in addition to the option to do all of these classes via Zoom, we also are building what's called the content library. Anybody who has an active pass, which is all of you, has access to about eight to 10 of these videos where you can purchase the full version and have all of them, which is a lot nowadays. Bring those hands back together. And then let's, what do we do? What do we do? Hands to the ground. Is that where we're doing, Holly? A little help. All right, footsteps back. You can have vinyasa. Actually, sounds kind of good. I think I'm going to take a vinyasa. And then you can either meet me in child's pose or down dog. Your choice. If your low back is angry or you feel like catching your breath is tricky right now, child's pose might be a good spot for you just for a couple breaths. Honor that space. Okay, everyone who's in down dog right now, I want you to take just a quick peek up at your hands and think, can I spread my fingers even wider than they, they are right now? If the answer is yes, do it. Feel what that feels like. And then push your hips back a little further towards the wall behind you. Bend the knees. And think about somebody standing behind you, kind of holding on to your hip creases, pulling you. Just tap your tush on that wall behind. Perfect. Small steps of the feet. Start walking forward. Knee, knee, in, forward, fold. You're going to separate your feet at least hip maybe wider in that forward fold. Right hand's gonna go to your left elbow. Left hand's gonna go to your right elbow and you are in a ragdoll shape. Soften those knees, take a nice gentle bend. Really let your head droop down through the middle. Work out any tension hiding in your low back. And breathe. and start to reach towards the earth. Bring yourself up halfway, long spine, pause there, hold that flat back, exhale and stay right there. Use your next natural inhale to plant the feet and reach the hands up towards the sky. Let them touch in a high prayer and then open them out to an X shape. Relax the shoulders, close the eyes, stay right here. Weight's going to shift towards your right foot. You're gonna lift your left toes up off the earth and point those left toes. Hold there. Leg that's lifted out to the side, let it come over and crisscross over your standing leg. Hands meet above your head. And then I want you to lean towards the leg that's on top. So you're gonna to lean over that direction. So for me, I'm leaning towards my left, but that would be your right. Perfect, bring this back to center, open out to that same X shape, weight shifts to other foot, opposite toes lift and point, hold the X. 
Relax those shoulders down into the sockets where they belong. See if you can make those same wide puppy paws with your hands. Focal point six to eight feet out in front. Probably on the floor, but maybe on a wall. Not a person. Hold. Lifted foot starts to come over and then crisscross. Hands meet above your head and then lean the other direction. Perfect, good work. Separate out. Just take your time, fold down towards the ground again, find that same ragdoll. Right hand to left elbow, left hand to right elbow. And there's nothing really fancy about this pose. It can feel pretty sloppy even, letting the knees bend, letting the belly just kind of droop down towards the floor. It's about release. And then we'll take our hands to the earth. Walk your feet in a little closer. Right foot's gonna step back behind you. And then I want you to spin that right foot till it comes parallel with the back of your mat. Bring yourself up, start thinking about warrior two. So right foot is back, parallel with the back of your mat. In fact, I'm gonna switch just so I don't get as confused. So right foot is parallel, left foot is forward, arms reach T. Now anytime you do warrior two, your hips are straight to the side, but your arms come open and T. And you gaze forward towards your front knee. We're gonna take one warrior dance here. So hand that's in the front flips to the ceiling, lean away from that bent knee, keeping it bent, reverse warrior. Take it all the way through to a side angle. That front elbow might go to your knee, top arm comes up and over, bicep towards your ear. If you were to wave right now, a hand that's in the sky, your palm is pointing towards the earth. Any design on your t-shirt is straight out, same direction as your hips. Beautiful, bring that back up to warrior two. Straighten front knee, start thinking about triangles. So these back toes might turn just slightly to a little bit of a 45 to get that back hip a little more underneath of you. Pull your front hip towards you as you reach out and over it and then tip to find your version of triangle. Yeah, those look awesome. Hand in the sky, make sure that palm is flipped again to face the same direction as your hips. Beautiful corrections in the room. Take your time to come out of that. Front knee might soften. All right, my friends, we are going to cartwheel hands forward towards this front foot. But from here, you're going to get kind of fancy. So you're going to take this foot that's at the front. It's going to step all the way back. And then you're going to take your right hand, move it to the middle of your mat, even with about your forehead. And you can do two things. You can take a full version of side plank, so start to shift your feet so that they're on their sides. Or you can drop your right knee down into the ground. Have it as a little kickstand helper. Third option, take that left foot, step it about halfway up your mat. Still use your right foot as a long leg. Keep moving. Big shape. All right, my friends, hands to the earth. Turn those feet back over. Downward facing dog, child's pose, full vinyasa. Your choice. One more breath. All right, friends, back to the front of your mat. However you want to get there, crawl, leap, hop, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Bring yourself back to standing. I promise. It's worth it. Step the left foot back, spin it. Warrior two, other side. So this is what I'm talking about, about not fighting the poses. Figure out how they work for you. Sometimes it's good to push ourselves and sometimes it's smart to know when it's too much. Flip that front hand, lean away, reverse warrior. 
Take it all the way through. Let's find that side angle just as we did before. Bicep by ear. Keep the nice bend in that front leg. Back to your warrior two. Front knee straightens. Start thinking about triangle. Those toes turn just a smidge just to kind of turn that back hip. Front hip pulls into the body. Reach out and over that front hip first, then tip. It's gonna get you about an extra inch in your triangle. Yes, the corrections with the wrist, that hand is facing to the side. Perfect, take your time, maybe softening knee to come back up. All right, start to cartwheel this forward. This is where you're gonna get fancy again. <laughs> Front foot steps back, left hand goes to the middle of your mat. Step into your version of side plank. Maybe it's staggered feet. Maybe it's stacked feet. Maybe it's left knee on the ground. Or maybe it's right foot in a kickstand. Lots of options. We have no problem you taking whatever version or no version is right for you. Stay in it, give me another breath. You guys, all did a nice job. Put that hand out in front. Beautiful. Unwind. Step to down dog, child's pose, vinyasa. Wherever you want to be. Again, if you choose that downward dog, See if those fingers can go a little wider. If you're in a child's pose, elbows can be lifted or you can surely just surrender those elbows down to the earth. You also have a little bit of space for some freedom here to explore something different if it speaks louder. Good work. All right, I think you're deserving a little slower pose now. Right foot takes its time, move to a down dog. Right foot lifts to the sky, one more three leg. Bring that right knee forward on the inside edge of your right wrist, and then drop the knee down into the ground. Looking for pigeon. So the right leg cuts across the mat at about a 45. This left leg goes long, I drop my knee to the ground, and then I go knee, toe, knee, so, and take my time to walk that leg a little longer behind me. Sometimes it makes sense to look over your shoulder and make sure that leg is coming straight out of your hip. Hands content, you can stay tall, or you can surrender down onto a block or a couple. You can come out of this shape if this doesn't work for you. You can always slide over to this opposite hip, take a more modified version with bent knees or you can sweep yourself onto your back and lay on your back. <clears throat> Space is about releasing those hips towards the earth. Keeping some space. Close the eyes or at least soften the muscles of the face, shoulders. One more round of breath here. Start to walk the hands back in a little closer. Wake up those hips by maybe swaying a little bit in your pigeon. Hands go in a good spot where they can support your upper body weight. Toes curl under on that back foot, and we'll just start to lift our hips back up, looking for a downward facing dog. Again, walk that dog, bend the right knee, bend the left. Nice, friends. All right, when you're ready, left foot lifts high, three-legged dog again. 
The left knee comes forward towards the inside of that wrist. You might hover just for a little abdominal challenge, then drop that knee down. This is cutting across your mat at an angle. Back leg, make sure it's straight out of that hip, just as you did before. And then knee toe, knee toe. Give yourself a little bit inching down towards the earth. Blocks can always go here or even under this back hip if they need something to kind of help you feel a little more grounded. You can bring a block forward and lay your arm or your head on it. There's all different ways that we can try to make this feel more appropriate for our own personal bodies. So you just decide what's working for you and then find your space in it. Especially if you're working with any hip flexor, kind of tension, tightness, piriformis, glutes, outer hips, if any of that feels a little bit overworked from other forms of exercise you do, give yourself time to let this shape feel like it's yours. More nice round of breath here. Start to bring the hands back underneath the body, maybe a little swaying in your pigeon. Get those hands in a good place where they feel like they can support you. Toes curl under on that back foot. Maybe getting the knee in a place where it feels like it can help. And then lift the hips. Here we go. Back to your last downward facing dog. So make it count. Maybe your feet even separate as wide as the mat and you sway a little bit in your hips. Or if that's not working for you, just drop your knees down. Let's take a big child's pose. Whatever version feels like it's releasing tension in the back. Letting your hamstrings have a space. All right, meet me in table, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders, three cat cows, belly dropping on your inhale, back rounding on your exhale, close your eyes if you feel comfortable. Last one. Next time you hit that rounded cat spine, hold it. Bring your big toes to meet one another. Start inching your knees a little wider, maybe as wide as your mat. And then sit with big toes touching, hips go back towards your heels. It's a wide knee child's pose. We might even reach for a block to bring it for a place for our head. Let the shoulders relax. Heart feels really heavy but the middle of your chest is dropped towards the earth. Knowing that your block can be switched in any direction, your elbows can go wide. If you don't need a block, maybe you're falling all the way to the earth without it, great. If you've got any kind of tension in your forehead today, and I give you an option. Your elbows can sink into the ground and take your hands, create kind of a basket weave of the fingers, and then place this on the back of your head. Just putting a little bit of pressure right onto kind of that third eye, right in the middle of the forehead as it pushes into the earth. So the wider you walk your elbows, the more you'll feel like you're pushing your head into the ground. For some of us that feels really good. For others, that's gonna be attention we don't want or need. So don't feel forced to take that. It's not working for you today. Got about three more breaths to really let your belly feel heavy, your heart feel heavy, hips open. 
muscles of the feet, getting a good stretch as we place pressure back towards ankles and heels. Your time to use your next inhale breath to get the hands in a spot where they can lift you back up towards the table. It might make sense to find a cat cow or a little sway forward and back. A little sway side to side. And then I'm going to give you two options. You can walk your knees forward towards your wrists and then just kind of like sit over your ankles to get onto your seat or you can swing your legs to one side or the other and find your way onto your seat. When you find your seat, let's start in a bound angle first. So soles of feet look for each other. Pinky toes touch, but I almost want you to think about your big toes like they're opening a book for your feet or the book. If that feels like too much for your hips, you can always take blocks. Go on the outer edges of your knees to keep your knees from going too far to the sides. You might need to readjust your sits bones to really make sure that's connected. So a little sway side to side sometimes is good. Maybe some neck movement would feel appropriate for you here. Closing the eyes, letting the chin drop and drape towards your chest. Depending on where you hold your stress. Some of us are more likely to hold it in our hips. Some of us are more likely to hold it in our low backs. Where a big chunk of us holds it in our shoulders, upper back and neck. So this pose kind of helps all of us, regardless of where we hold that stress and tension. So surrender to it. Let yourself find the space that feels good to you. And if having these heels pulled close into your body isn't working for you, you can always walk them a little further away. Same thing with those blocks and make more of just like a diamond shape. If you want to let your chest drop a little closer towards your heels, this turns into what they call cobbler's pose. If you'd like to move into something deeper, feel free. Just watching the rounding of your low back, always pulling through the crown of your head. Perfect. Take your time to slowly bring your chest away from those feet. Hands coming to outer edges of knees, help them back to center. Hands plant behind you and just let the knees windshield wiper a little bit right and left. And then just check yourself in space. If you're not quite in the right spot, to so lean back on your back, readjust just a smidge. And then reach for one of your blocks if you brought one. If you don't have it, it's no big deal, but just move yourself back towards your back. I'm gonna give you the option for some gentle inversion here, but if you have something that's more your style to end the practice, you can stop listening to me and do your own thing as long as you keeping a mindful eye on your own safety. So knees are up towards ceiling, heels walk in close towards the glutes. You'll lift the hips just enough to slide a block underneath your back. Put that block at what they call the sacrum. So not the cushy part of your bum and not the small of your back and kind of the bony area right in between. You can stay right here, feet rested on the earth, maybe hands resting on your belly or on your heart. Or it might feel nice to start to lift the feet towards the sky. So even if you don't have a block, you can lift your feet up to the sky here and give yourself a waterfall pose or a legs up the wall without a wall. If a shoulder stand is part of your practice and you'd rather lift your way up off the block into something a little bit more, feel free. Or 
For those of you who are on the outer edges of the room, if you want to turn and use a wall, you certainly can move your mat a little closer and use a wall. But obviously, inversions are good for us for many reasons. Anytime we flip ourselves upside down, moving blood away from the feet, back towards the heart, giving a little set, reset rather, to the nervous system. If at any point in time you want to bring those feet back down to earth or bend the knees, feel free to do so. The closing poses of every yoga practice should feel personal. So if there's something else the body might be requesting that maybe I'm not speaking to, you can honor that. As those inversions feel complete, you might bring feet back to earth, perhaps even keeping the block under the back for a long body stretch or removing the block. Sometimes it feels nice to keep it right there and let the legs go long. Feel a nice front body stretch. Hands might even reach up overhead. For others, that's too much with the block under their back. So you might do one leg at a time or remove the block completely. Once that long body stretch feels complete, you can ease your feet back up the mat, maybe removing block and letting yourself finish with a spinal twist. Either hugging both knees towards chest and rocking side to side, ending up on right or left, or maybe you wanna do a single leg towards the belly and take it by itself over and across the body. Depending on what part needs the attention. If it's more your piriformis, your glutes, your low back, you might take one leg at a time over the body. If you'd like to just feel more of a twist through the core, you can take both knees to one side or the other. But this part of the practice should definitely feel much calmer much more relaxed, more independent. As you turn on that listening ear, very much so to your own body. Because as much as we value listening to others, it's also important that we listen to ourselves. We learn to hear that inner voice and become in tune with what signals the body is sending us. Not only in our yoga practice, but when we're off the mat as well. <clears throat> so take your time to explore any final poses that feel like they're necessary and then move yourself in to your final savasana. Final resting pose in every yoga practice can be whatever it needs to be to you. The most tr traditional version is with legs fully extended down the mat, hands equidistant away from the body with the palms flipped towards the ceiling. Resting here on your back. But of course, if you need bent knees or even to lay on your side, Take note that that is always available to you.
slowly starting to become aware of your breath. Allowing very gentle movements back into the body. Start small, just wiggling the fingers or wiggling the toes. Putting the back of the head, stay in place with the nose, maybe sweep a little bit right and left on the ceiling. your time to perhaps easy bend the knees, walk them a little closer to the body. Maybe hugging into a chest feels nice or just rocking side to side. Rolling to rest on your right hand side, using your arm as a pillow, pulling the knees in close into somewhat of a fetal position and just hang here as long as you need. the hands begin to press into the ground, pushing you back up to a seated posture to finish today's class. Or you can stay right where you are. Hands coming together, palm to palm, resting at the heart, eyes closed. Our final reading today reminds us the importance of listening. We are drawn to people who understand us. And how do we know we're understood? Because people who understand us ask us questions, listen to the answers, encourage us to elaborate and respond directly to what we say. Real attention is one of the nicest and most meaningful things we can give anyone. And we don't do it often enough. I want to make sure that I listen to others carefully and sincerely. It will make them feel good, and I can learn a lot too. Listening, not imitation, may be the most sincerest form of flattery, Dr. Joyce Brothers. I greatly appreciate you finding this time for yourself, not only your physical body, but for your mind and spirit to have a chance to sift alongside us here in person as well as from home. May you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you again. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.